Hey everyone, Josh here from Fresh Start Customs, and today I'm going to be showing you how to edit these ID badges, and specifically going to be going more into detail with the inlaid badges, because I know if you're new to laser engraving and laser design, there's going to be a couple things that you're going to run into that are a little bit tricky. So let's go ahead and get started on the single material badges first. These are super easy, um, so if you're a beginner and you don't want to have to worry about kerf, or changing or editing anything for your materials, then all you got to do is open up your single material um, editor fire, file, um, and then all you got to do is come in here and double click, type in the words that you want. Um, depending on the program you have, if you have something different than Illustrator, this may act different, but then all you need to do is create text for yourself. So if it lets you type in here, because I'm just using standard uh, Arial font here that should be with most com computers and most programs so you can go ahead and type your company name um, so for example I'm gonna type in fresh start customs and it's okay if it's off center for now we're gonna correct that in just a second and then um, about the company I'm just gonna put laser engraving And then obviously here, you can choose if you want to leave the circle and just drop your logo in the inside and delete this text. Um, what I would do is just delete the text and the circle and then drop your logo there. Um, for this example, I'm just going to be using the letters FSC that I made earlier. And you'll just drop that in there. And then uh, you'll fill out the rest of this. So I'm not going to go ahead and waste your guys' time. You can fill out the rest of that. And then all you have to do is highlight everything, and then you can actually center it by aligning it here. And one thing that you will want to remember you do beforehand is you want to select all of your text, and you want to create outlines out of it. You'll go to Type here, and then after you click Type, you'll click Create Outlines. So as you can see, you may have seen that you won't be able to edit this any longer after you click Create Outlines. And then if you have um, cursive writing, you're going to want to go over to Pathfinder. If you don't have Pathfinder over here, you'll click on Window, and then click on Pathfinder. And then what you'll do is you'll click Merge. Um, so make sure you have all your text selected and not the line, um, and click Merge, just if you have cursive writing. And then you're all set. You can save your file, print it, and you're good to go. Um, the only thing with the print that you have to be careful of is you have to... Um, score these blue lines and then cut the red lines. So just a heads up on that, engrave the letter, score the blue lines, cut the red lines, and then you're good to go. So now into what the this video is mainly about is the um, inlay. So this one's a little bit tricky. This is probably why you're here. So for the inlay, as you can see, you got to have all your text opposite of each other. I left the logo alone because you're going to delete that anyways. So um, once again, you just double click in here, and then you can type, and then the text will automatically be backwards here. So I'm going to just type in um, Fresh Start Customs again. There we go. And then um, Laser Engraving again. There we go. And then you can do the rest again. I'm not going to waste your time with that. After you get everything filled out, you can actually go in, change your font to whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to choose this font here, just for an example to show you that you can change your fonts. Um, and then we'll line all this up again. Just highlight it all, click Align, and then it's good to go. Technically, it is backwards, um, so it might be a little hard to read. And if you want to just double check that it looks right, just go up to um, Object, Transform, and then Reflect, and then click OK. And as you can see, that is the correct spelling and everything there. It, it looks great. So I'm going to just undo that with Control-Z. And that's pretty much it. You just want to make sure this is backwards if you're doing it on acrylic. So acrylic is going to um, engrave backwards, and then it'll have a nice smooth finish on the front, like you'll see here later after I print these off. And now let's go ahead and talk about the kerf. So all of this right here is going to fit into your other acrylic piece. I'm using black acrylic for my other piece and then um, translucent or clear acrylic for the center piece here. As you can see, it's a little bit of an overlay, not much, but um, 
the amount is right here. I have it listed here, 0 0.0125. And what I mean by that is the inside of this, right here is the measurements, it's 2.63 by 3.88. So what you wanna do is you wanna add this number to that amount on both sides. So um, I already have this set perfectly in the file, so you won't have to do it here, but if you end up having material that is either too tight or too loose, you may have to, to adjust the outside piece here. So for example, let's say this is too tight for you. So you reduce it, um, you just take off the five at the end of both of these numbers, for example. So you're only reducing it by 0 0.0005. So it's a very minute amount, but it's enough to loosen it up because I actually did do um, this as 0 0.012 earlier, and it was just loose enough where you could squeeze it in and out by your hand but I didn't want it to fall out, so that's why I increased this for the base price here. So that's how you would adjust the kerf here. So in this example, it's gonna be a little bit looser since I just reduced those. If I wanted to add it back, I could add it back. So that's something that you may have to adjust and play with if you're using different materials. If you're using the correct materials, that's great, um, and you shouldn't have to adjust anything. And then, um, Obviously, if you change the size, this is going to change the line here, so you may have to adjust your line so they match up on the sides here. Or if you don't like this line at all, you can delete it. I personally think it gives it a nice flair to, re, uh, to separate your phone number and email address from the actual company here. And then once you get all of that said and done, um, you've got to remember to select all of your text just like we did before. And then you're going to... Um, go up to type, click create outlines just like before, and then pathfinder and merge just like before. I'll go ahead and delete this logo here and we'll drop this logo in there just for an example. And as you can see, I have the logo the correct way and it's supposed to be inverted here. So once again, we're gonna go up to object, transform, and then reflect, click okay. Now it's the correct way for um, acrylic, and I'm just gonna realign and center all of this. There we go. So now that we have all of that lined up, we're gonna go ahead and save the file, and then we'll be good to, uh, to print it off. Um, before you save, you will wanna delete these text here. We won't need this anymore. There we go. And if this is actually text for your logo, remember to create outlines again. Um, I already did this once before, but uh, as you can see, it's already created the outlines for it there. So we're good to go there. We're gonna go ahead and file and then save as, and this is gonna be the test badge. Okay, and we're gonna save it as an SVG file too. So we have a secondary um, thing that we can print off here. So let's see, file, save as, SVG, there we go. So now that we have that file saved, we can go ahead and upload it to the Glowforge here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add this to the Glowforge. There's our test badge. And now that we got our test badge here, um, we can go ahead and select our material type. Um, you're gonna select the first material type that you're gonna use. Just for example, this example, I'm gonna click medium clear acrylic and I'm just gonna print this center piece off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit ignore on this piece. This cut here, we're gonna set to ignore because we're not gonna cut this at all. We'll just move that off to the side for now. And then we're gonna leave everything else except for this one line, that's blue line. You have to set that to score. That's super important. Make sure you set that to core, uh, score. If you leave it on cut, that's gonna cut your badge in half and then you're gonna be disappointed. So go ahead and make sure you set that to score. That's the most important thing here and the only reason why I'm showing this. So engrave, and then you can even change the order here if you want to. So engrave, score, cut, and then that will print off your clear acrylic that I'm gonna show you in just a second. And then you will you can either delete all of this or put all of this on ignore. I'll just delete it for this example. You'll put in your next material, which will be like, um, medium black acrylic right there it is okay 
and then you'll set that to cut and you'll cut this piece out and once you have this piece cut out um, you'll assemble it and let's go ahead and jump into the assembly now all right everyone as you can see I just got all of these different types of badges off of the laser printer um, and as you can see I redacted my personal information with these uh, little electrical tape here so you're not gonna see my email address and phone number that's the only reason why that electrical tape is here so let's go ahead and jump into the build and then I'm gonna go and talk about Kerf and what you can do, like I showed earlier, to adjust it and what you can expect from it. So um, first off, this is the single badge that I, was t uh, that I have on the file. Um, this is where it just scores the insides. Um, as I showed you earlier, you're gonna have to make sure all of this is set to score, even the line inside and the round. If you keep this round part, I would probably delete that and just add your logo like I have in the notes there. Um, and then if you want to, you can color the outside edge just by pulling this masking tape off. So let me go ahead and pull that off really quick. As you can see, I went ahead and pulled that masking tape off of just the outer edge. Now what I can do is I can spray paint that if I want to, um, or you can hand color it in with like little pen coloring. So I'll probably do that later. So I'm not gonna pull the rest of the masking tape off. But that's what you can expect from this. This is just an example one that I have as my main photo for this. Um, so just showing you guys, if you want a single badge, that way you don't have to worry about kerf or you don't have to worry about um, breaking anything. It'll be one solid piece. You can print this on wood, acrylic, any kind of material that's laser safe. It's one single piece here. So just a heads up on that. If you don't wanna worry about any of this that we're doing over here, go ahead and print the single layer kind. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. And let's see if we can zoom in on what I'm doing here. So as you can see, we have the um, inlay parts and I have one that's completed already. This is the fluorescent green and black acrylic. Um, so let me show you that. This is kind of what it looks like when it's assembled here. I know it's probably hard to catch on camera, but it's pretty, pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Um, let me go ahead and show you the assembly here. So whenever this prints off, it's gonna print off just like this. You'll print your first material, like I said earlier, and then you'll print your second material. And make sure that your words are inverted. That way when you flip it over, you're gonna flip this over. And then when you peel this masking tape off, it's gonna be a real smooth engrave. Um, so what you'll wanna do is make sure you keep track of the top of your black acrylic or whatever type of acrylic that you use, or even if you use wood for this, just make sure you keep track of the top. Because when the laser cuts out, it's gonna cut that kerf that I was talking about. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna cut in a V shape like this while it's cutting, and it's going to slightly give a slight edge on the ed edge of your material as it cuts out. So what you wanna do is make sure that that's pointing up so you have the, the um, V shape that's slanting inwards and then when you flip this over, you have the other V shape that's slanting inwards and then they'll match together when you put it, put it up like this. You may be able to get it in by hand. It's gonna be a little snug, but if you can't, you just use a little rubber tip hammer, lightly tap it into place. Just like that. And then you built the entire thing. Now you can pull all your masking tape off with like, um, uh, piece of duct tape. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over so you don't see my info here and then I'll just be careful on the front when I peel it off. Um, I would probably recommend using electrical or um, duct tape here. The reason being is all your letters are going to have little tiny pieces inside here. So all you gotta do is lay your electrical tape on top. Um, if you want, you, what I'm probably gonna do is pull off the bigger pieces by hand and then use the electrical tape or the duct tape, I should say. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and pull all this off by hand really quick and fast forward for you guys. All right, so as you can see, I pulled off the bigger pieces. Now I'm gonna just use my um, electrical, or my duct tape. Sorry, I keep calling it electrical tape here. It is duct tape. Um, we're gonna pull all those little tiny pieces out of the letters here. There we go. So we got all the little tiny pieces out, I believe, from the letters now. 
Um, I'm gonna just leave this little bottom half here um, on so you don't see my info there. So let's go ahead and flip this over and then we'll peel off the front and then we'll be all set here. There we go. So I'm gonna leave this bottom half on for the same reasons as the, ba the back half, but there is the little ID badge there. I know it doesn't wanna focus on it, but they turn out really cool. Um, I'll get some actual still shots at the end here so you can see what they look like at the end and I'll do some uh, photoshopping with my number and information and then that way you can see a better look to these but these turned out really awesome they're nice and tight um, like I said you would probably need to use a rubber tip hammer on these if you're using the same material and kerf just lightly lightly tap it and um, make sure that you don't crack it there um, if you do end up cracking it, then you may want to reduce your, your kerf, um, but this seems to be working pretty much consistently with all um, medium um, proof grade material. Um, so just a heads up on that, if you use thicker material or if you use um, a material that's warped, your kerf is going to have a bigger V shape in different areas if you have a bigger material or a warp in your material. So just a heads up on that. That can be another reason why they don't fit. Um, let me go ahead and zoom out again. And then all you gotta do after that is get a standard size lanyard um, and it should fit just perfectly. And if it's too tight there, then you can just make a quick, easy adjustment for your, um, for your hole. You just make it a little bit taller or a little bit wider depending on how big of a lanyard um, button that you have. And that's pretty much it, you guys. That is how you make the ID badge badges here. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you guys next time.